This video is not intended for children under 13. Hello everyone and welcome to another Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. I'm Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo and I am at the helm of the long-awaited Carrick. Now, some of you may have already seen a little bit of emotional video done by me the day I got into the Carrick for the first time. Those would be my patrons. But today I'm going to take a little bit more of a look at this wonderful spacecraft and just talk a little bit about it. First off, all I have to say is that this is the my favorite bridge of all the ships that I own right now. It has a great view. This, this all glass cockpit that I could just walk right into is just amazing. Now this is the lower bridge. This is where you have a couple of seats for a pilot, co-pilot, and I'm not sure what this person is. They say two co-pilots, but I'm sure one's an engineer. Maybe a data collection specialist. This ship is going to be collecting a lot of data. And because of that, back here in the lower bridge, you have all your servers that are going to be collecting all the countless numbers of calculations that are going to be done when you're plotting a jump point, either with this ship or with the included Pisces. You have a lot of cool things that you could open in here, all these different bays that you can get at different things. Obviously, all this is going to be for some kind of damage control mini game that we're going to have to play in the future. All perfectly cool. Some things harder to open and close than others, I like buttons better than this. But a lot of things open and close on this ship, and that's pretty awesome. We're on the technical deck right now. And we can go to the upper bridge first, and then we'll come back down here. This just looks like a storage locker for now. It'll probably have some kind of equipment in the future. But to get to the upper part of the bridge, we have to use an elevator. So we're going to do that right now. And every one of these elevators has a cool little LCD on it that tells you exactly where you can go on it. And that's pretty awesome because you don't have to hover over a stupid button to figure out what to push. And I think this is the beginning of the new UI for all the lifts that are in all the different places. Now I take it the navigator and maybe two gunners are up here. Not sure if that's what they are. It might be. Allographic table over here that will give you a situational awareness as to what's going on around you. Um, I think, yeah, it's offline right now. And of course the captain doesn't have a chair. So I think maybe they'll add that at some point. But the captain walks up here and takes command of his vessel or her vessel right here. And again, the best view of all the ships so far that I own in Star Citizen. Just loving it. Great. Amazing. All right, let's go down to the lower bridge and we'll start our investigation here. As we walk out of the lower bridge we're on the habitation deck and this is where all the living is done obviously from the name of it so the spaces here are brighter and lighter okay lighter color gray brighter lighting just looking nice the first one of these cabins that we come to is the captain's cabin that looks kind of like a ready room that you would find in an older starship in the star trek universe and of course you have this wonderful window over here that gives you Nice look outside, which I believe all the ships should have. There is a display over here, liking it a lot. You can make it go up and down, and obviously in the future, maybe that's going to be where we're getting news from around the verse. The chair looks like it would move forward. What is missing here is a lounge area. I'd like to see like an easy chair or maybe a couple of chairs right in front for crew. Just something else, you know, so if he wanted to talk to the first officer, they could talk in private, maybe have a chess match, whatever it is. And of course, what is a bedroom without a teddy bear? The teddy bear is in all the bedrooms that I've found so far, which is pretty cool. You can put it on the bed or just hold it, liking it. It's a humble area for a captain, but... This is a civilian ship that's based on the venerable military version 
of the Carrick. In fact, this might just be a reworked Carrick for civilian use. Captain has his own head and shower. And of course, you have your vanity with all the fixings for a male captain and none for a female captain. We'll have to fix that in the future. And of course, the mirrors still think we're all vampires. We're going to walk out and we're going to go down the hall and we're going to start on the left this time and go into the crew quarters. Now, the crew quarters have a recreational area. I'm not sure what these are right now, but they also have a nice little window, which you can see we're on a moon over here. We're actually on Walla, I think it is. And here we have a one, two, three, four, five, six sided pool table. Not sure how you play that, but I'm sure we'll learn if they're going to put actual gameplay on this table in the game at some point. Not going to beg for that, but it would be cool if they ever did that. And then five of your crew, well, your five crew, because this has a crew of six, captain and five crew mem members, all sleep here. They have their own lockers and everything, and any friends that you take along with you on your exploration missions will log off and log out and log back in here. It's a great space. Now, I'm only going to show you one of these, but there's a shower on each side because five people, you might need more showers. And these, I believe, are your showers. Let's take a look. Yeah, these are showers. I don't believe that these double as heads. Sometimes they do that to the lower people. <laughs> Get a vanity for two people. Nice big vampiric mirror again. Now I have to go on the other side and take a look. Just because I didn't see a head on that side. So we come to the other, uh, these are the toilets. The other side was the showers, these are the toilets. So you have two toilets over here. And that's good. Just hope that you never eat burritos and ice cream for dinner and have to run to the bathroom. Not that I have, just saying. I like that all the rooms on this level have windows to keep you kind of connected to what's going on outside. It is an exploration vessel, so having a way to view what's around you makes sense. And there's the beautiful landscape of Walla. It is nighttime right now, but you might finish this in daytime. You never know. This is a crew gathering area, but it's also the... I'd like to call it the canteen it's not really a mess hall because it has two microwaves, or maybe those are more like uh, synthesizers like in uh, Star Trek, but we don't know yet because there's food underneath. It doesn't look like there's a lot of preparation area for different types of meals, which is kind of weird for a vessel that would be part of the Navy. In these times, I think most navies, the mess hall is one of the most important parts of the ship because it's where you kick back and a good meal after a long day's hard work really makes sense. They could have done a little bit more here, but I think it works and I think it's pretty awesome because in reality, it's a virtual game. And do we really need to eat? Well, I think we're gonna because there's a lot of bonuses coming to eating in Star Citizen in the future. Now, this is the medical center, okay, so the med bay. And if you come in here, there's actually a way, like, say you go on planet, you find out that you're contaminated. You would stand in this area, and over here are all these jets that would decontaminate you before you actually go into the clean area of the hospital, and vice versa. When you come out, if there's an infectious disease, you get decontaminated going out. That way you didn't infect the rest of the crew. There's a couple of beds here. They're not, I don't think these are those hospital beds other than maybe these are recovery beds so you could sit and lie down. Two out here. Looks like there's a storage room on one side and this looks like it's a doctor's office where you're taking part in the medical gameplay. You could do medical research in here. Lots of oxygen bottles, different types of things in here. And again, server access just in case they find bacteria or viruses on planets that need to be recorded. Um, that's conjecture, by the way. 
This is a medical bed where you actually receive treatment. You can bind to this bed over here on this display. And let's get it. Oh, God. Things just don't work. And there it is right there. Set as preferred ICU. Now if myself or one of my crew members were to die, they would respawn here so they didn't have to find their way all the way back to wherever you were. Now, hopefully that type of persistence is coming sooner rather than later. But I haven't tested that out, although we should. And it looks like, okay, so if I want to keep the consistency or the quarantine going, always remember to close those doors. Stand here to be decontaminated when that starts working. And then you come out the door. Now you have, I believe this is... It's locked for now and it opens that door but this is the elevator that we took up from the lower deck so we've been on the lower deck a little bit we're gonna end our tour there so for now we're gonna go back this way now this is just an area that is going to walk around the medical bay but it also has the same footprint of the deck that we're gonna go to next now we're gonna call our elevator And it comes down from the technical deck where we left it. And, well, we left it on the habitation deck. No, we didn't take this one. We took the smaller one before. So we're now on the technical deck, and the first thing that we see is the Pisces Bay. Now, there's many ships that could fit in here. Pisces, Merlin, Archimedes. I know the Aurora could fit in here. So I'm sure, like, ships that have big wingspans like the Mustang won't fit here. And I think those are all the ships. Oh, and probably the Argo cargo and Argo shuttle. I don't have one of those to test, but I have landed my Pisces here, and it was actually pretty cool. Now, you control the doors or the door on this bay through the front part. So right now we have the elevator over here. We'll go back there in a couple of seconds. But we're going to walk forward first because we're going to talk about these areas that we can control here. So this is where I could actually open the door to my Carrick and allow my Pisces to come in. We're going to close it right now only because... Eh, actually, I'm going to leave it open. We're going to have a little bit of fun in, a little, in just a short time. So if we walk aft, because we've already been forward, both down the starboard side, which we're on, and the... Let's go over here. Actually, I might have missed a room or two. I want to take a look and see if I have. Nope. A bolt down the port and starboard sides, there are mirrored hallways. And down these hallways are the ball turrets. And then we'll check out the other side too. And you can enter the turret like this. And if we look from the outside, you'll see the turret start to... It projects out, and it gives a huge amount of coverage for protecting the vessel. Now, personally, I'm still against man turrets. I know that Chris and his team think that they're fun. In reality, a remote turret is always going to be more efficient, which is why, at the end of World War II, our aircraft were being transitions from manned to remote turrets. Manned turrets on the B-17, the B-24, the B-25, and then remote turrets on the Black Widow, the B A-26, I think it was, and then the, oh my God, the, the beautiful B-29. Now this is going to be the engineering deck, and this, I could just see Kaylee walking around here from Firefly and taking care of everything. Oh, it is so awesome. There are so many things that you could do here. There is a ladder over here that you can go down and you can go down to the lower engineering deck. And down here, I could just see the damage control gameplay down here. Running, running down here and then having to go find which one of these modules needs to be repaired. And you open the doors and it reveals whatever's inside of it. Like in this situation, um, oh, is that the shield? No, is that the power plant? That might be a power plant. I'm not 100% sure, I'll have to read the outside. But you get what I'm saying, like that's a shield generator, that's a shield generator. Okay, so that, 
I should have gone with my first. Life support, radar, and then you have these two areas off to each side that look like that might be the power plant. I'm not 100% sure. And access to the fuel, but I think it's just going to be over here where you'll have access to it. Maybe managing fuel pressure as you're getting fuel added or getting refueled. Pretty cool. I don't see a fuel scoop or anything like that or any kind of a refinery to be able to get fuel from stars or gas giants, whatever it might be in this game at some point. I'm going to go back to upper engineering. And that concludes the tour of the engineering deck. Pretty cool. These thrusters are amazing. Again, this will be the port side turret. Now, this is the starboard side turret. That was the port side turret. I get turned around on this ship just a little bit. I should know better. And here is the elevator on the back side of it. Okay. So we should have the elevator already here. Next deck up is the cartography deck, and this is going to be one of the most important decks inside of the Carrick, because this is going to be where all that amazing data that you collect, all that datum data, <laughs> is going to be right here for you to see, and you'll be able to turn this on and see a much, much, much more detailed look into the system that you are exploring give you an absolute way to create a plan on how to continue exploration in that system. Be awesome. If we walk forward from here, there's an elevator. On each side over here, there's an escape pod. We'll go on each side. An escape pod, a very long window. Like, I think that they lost an opportunity to do something really cool here. This is an airlock with a really big window. I would have had this be like an observation deck and just have people sit here, maybe have a drink, put a couple of chairs over here, maybe a couch, <laughs> because this is the highest point on the character, and it's pretty awesome. Now we did close the door after I did it, and this is the hangar door. And you can walk forward from here, and that's it. There's no other way into the ship than this on the top. There's one of those tremendously large turrets, the remote turrets that the gunners would control. All right, so we're gonna go back inside. Now, I feel like I'm missing something, but I think it might be either on the lower deck or back on the technical deck, and we're gonna go down there and take a look. That's gonna be before we take a little bit of a walk and we go get ourselves a ship. All right, so habitation deck, sub deck. I think it was on the technical deck. We're gonna go down to the technical deck and we're gonna go look on either side and see as we move forward, move forward. I thought there were two rooms in here. That's a ser service ladder, there are. So this is a drone control room and drones are gonna be used for getting better scans of areas that might not be safe for humans. It could be used for other things too, maybe mining, maybe repairing the ship. My guess is a drone going through a smaller jump point maybe being controlled here or searching a planet that might have a very hazardous atmosphere or might be too hot to land human beings on. I mean, we send drones everywhere. It looks like I gotta get that fixed. Okay, as we go over here, this I think is damage control central. I mean, maybe it's a tool area for building things. Maybe there's a something written outside as to what it is that I don't see. It's a repair room. Okay, so I was right. And this is the drone room. Okay. So now we go back down to the bottom of the ship and we go to that area that is called the sub deck. Subdeck is going to be the area where all your cargo is in, but there's a little bit more to it because when the Carrick was introduced, these bottom areas that we're going to walk right into in a second. Oh, wait, first let's talk about this EVA suits. You see these here? 
weapons locker. So this is the armory. And if you go back here, there's an F turret back here that, that a gunner goes in. So this ship is very well protected. Another armory over here with three more suits. So that's six total, just in case you get boarded or have a hostile situation on a planet. So like the Drake Caterpillar, there's three of these bays that really do nothing right now. There are cargo pods that you could actually walk into and they could hold a lot down here. I, I think the elevator was done well. I would have used ladders instead so you could have used more area for stowage. But each one of these cargo pods was actually able to be traded out and be turned in, well, be traded out for something like a science, medical, habitation, so different types of decks. And that isn't something that we have inside the playable universe yet. So for now, these are just gonna be giant cargo pods, which is going to be important because running cargo in this ship is probably gonna be what you're gonna be going to do. He's refueling the ship takes more money than what we have. Okay, we have a couple of docking collars on this side also with more EVA suits and two airlocks, one on each side. Well, the one docking collar, one elevator. I take that back. So the docking collar is on the port side, which makes sense because it's port and it's an airlock situation where you open one side, close the other before going through with it. Otherwise you're venting the ship. Now this looks like it's pretty cool. It's a double airlock just in case. So you have two airtight doors here. And I like that they're keep, keep oh, sorry, I'm gonna stumble. I like that they're keeping the airtight integrity of the ship. All right, so this is the gar garage or vehicle bay. And it could fit quite a lot in here. And there's a, a few dragonflies, a couple of cyclones. We're going to go, and I think right off the ship, just about 1.5 clicks, right in front of it is going to be that... Uh, yeah, 1.5 clicks ahead should be that mining facility. Let's make sure that we're walking off the front of the ship, not the back of the ship. We were going the wrong way. So it's over the ridge in front of us, 1.5 clicks. And being that we're running at a human pace, that's a mile, it's going to take me about seven to eight minutes to get there. So I will join you after we get there. Alrighty, we entered the armistice zone, so we're going to get over here. It's been about four or five minutes, not too much longer than that. We're going to make our way to the platform over there and try to get ourselves spawned in one of the automobiles that we could have, whether it be an Ursa. I guess the Lynx isn't in the game yet, is it? Or we can get any one of a couple of Cyclones that I now own. Not going to take a bike because obviously the bikes are going to fit. I think the Ursa is going to be the one that I'm most interested to see the fit for myself. Looks like there might be somebody else here. Maybe not. Maybe not on the pad. We want to get our vehicle to be brought out. So we have to find that area. Get. Okay. Uh, the the lighting effects are starting to drive me crazy. Very J.J. Abrams-esque. So I'm thinking that you spawn vehicles over there. That's what I'm thinking. We're going to go over there first and see if that's the case. If not, it's, it's probably right there. Yeah, let's take a look over here. This looks like it might be a vehicle spawning area. Yeah, most likely. Let's get an Ursa over here. Landing services. Okay. This would be the area. All right, good. Good call. Now, we can get Raven, Carrick. It's RSI, isn't it? 
There's an Ursa Rover right there. We'll get the Ursa. I haven't driven the Ursa in a... I haven't driven the Ursa forever. Forever. So we'll take a look at it and see how this works. Yeah, I know. You're all saying, do the Pisces, do the Pisces. I do have footage of the Pisces landing on it, which I will try to get built into a future update for this review because I can't imagine that this is going to be the end of this review because the ship is still in development. I mean, because if you look at how quickly they altered a couple of things on it, just from what was said at CitizenCon, now that there's thousands of people flying around in this ship, they're going to have a little bit more. Enter remote turret. No, I don't want to. Open, press to unlock. There it is, power on. Welcome to Robert Space Industries. Let's see if I remember how to drive the rover. Yeah, it's not so bad. Alright, we need T for lights, good. Alright, let's go. 1.6 kilometers. That's a little bit further than I thought. Just about a mile, right? No, a little bit over a mile. And all this green stuff over here. And there's the carrot coming up pretty quickly. This was a much better trip. Now the Pisces is something that I want to do when somebody else is flying with me because trying to get to it takes forever by yourself and I want to do that in space or in flight, not on the ground. So I'm going to have to get one of my friends to uh, do a Pisces landing with me because the one I did for myself, it took me an hour and a half to A, get them in the right position and then B, actually fly out and then find my Pisces in order to land it. So there is something on this ship to allow you to stop this thing as soon as you drive up. And that's something that you would normally put out. Otherwise, you're going to knock the Ursa right into the back of the ship. All right. All right. All right, we got the Ursa. Let's hold the F key down over here. Power off. White. Yep. Get ourselves out of here. Okay, I've gotten stuck in the Ursa before. I think everybody that's had one early on might have also. And it looks like, yeah, it's a perfect fit. And there's not even any stowage that we have to do like tying it down or anything, because it's a video game. Otherwise, wow, that was actually a perfect... Well, look at that. That was a... Well, it wasn't perfect, but it was close to perfect. Wow. I'm pretty happy. Yeah, you could fit a lot in here. That's pretty cool. I probably should have backed it in, but I didn't want to show my horrible driving. Um, if I did, I probably would have done that in World of Tanks so you could see how poorly I drive. All right, let's uh, go up this Jeffrey's tube, which runs the height of the ship. We can get off right on the habitation deck, I believe. It might be, nope, it's not the habitation deck, is it? I think it's the technical deck. Yeah, it's the technical deck that you get off at. And that's pretty much my review of the Carrick. I have to say this, I am extremely impressed with the attention to detail that CIG has taken on this ship. There are some things that I wish were a tiny bit different, but nothing that can't be just polished out of the ship. I love this area. It's probably the same color. It's just lighting that's giving it this coloring. And I think that the technical deck being in a little dimmer, yeah, in a little bit dimmer light makes a lot of sense. I love the bridge area, the escape pods, which I still think if you're going to blow up, you're never going to be able to get into them. 
I love this. This is just great. And my first and only really big detraction from, for the ship was already corrected, and that was it's an exploration vis vessel, and the first couple of iterations of it, of this patch, it had no fuel. I mean, you can go from R-Corp to Microtech, and that was it. That was it. And then you would have to go to one of the places and fill up for like 20 or 30K, whatever it was. And that was just a little bit too much for me to actually have fun with the ship. And, you know, for now, I think they've done a great job. There's going to be a lot of things that are going to be worked out over time. Oh, we have radar here and radar downstairs? That makes no sense. But a lot of things that have to be worked out over time. But all in all, my favorite ship that I've been waiting for is indeed my favorite ship. And I'm very excited that all of you were able to experience my walkthrough. And thank you for supporting my channel for so very long. I really appreciate it. If you do like this video, please click the thumbs up button below. And if you do subscribe, be sure to click on the bell-shaped icon to get notified of all future videos. And a very, 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 very big thanks to my patrons. I've got a lot more coming for you all. And if you all want to, at some point, be one of my patrons, you can go out to patreon.com forward slash backgirl. And for as little as a dollar, you get some extra content and uh, access to a couple of Discord servers and some games that I play besides Star Citizen. Well, it looks like we cannot log out in this bed. That is a bummer. Unless there's something I'm missing. I read that that was something they fixed, but that's okay. This is on the test server. And with that said, you'll all be safe out there, and I'll talk to you soon.